Welcome to Breakfast with Unity, the Breakfast of Champions. So uh, what we're going to be doing today is we're going to actually be reading bitmap data from a PNG, um, texture data or pixel data or whatever you want to call it, and we're going to be uh, making that data create cubes in our scene so that we can create kind of a 3D cube-based scene based on a picture. So um, I'm first going to pull in an art asset here. This coin is from Kinney. Um, he licenses all of his stuff on CC0, so I don't have to give him props, but I'm giving him props anyway because he's awesome. Uh, K-E-N-N-E-Y dot N-L, if you want to check out more of his stuff. He's got a lot of stuff on open game art. Um, we've used his stuff in the past, too. So um, I just wanted a coin that uh, could do this. And I've also resized this coin. Most of his textures were 35 by 35, so they're 32 by 32 now, just in case that causes us a problem when we're trying to read this stuff in. And it very well might. So powers of two are usually easier to work with on, uh, on any time that you're trying to do this type of stuff. So, so we've got this uh, gold coin. I'm going to let it know that alpha is transparency. And uh, what else am I going to do? We don't really need to repeat this. We'll clamp it. And uh, we're going to start writing a script. We're just going to go right into it. So um, C sharp script. We're going to call this uh, create cubes from bitmap. I guess I could have said texture. They're kind of the same. They're they're kind of the same thing. Bitmap is actually probably more appropriate, even though we're not using BMP format. Um, but since PNG doesn't lose any data, this is. It's we're and we're since we're accessing it like a bitmap. I I didn't think bitmap, so uh, we're gonna do a public um, game object cube. That's what I'm gonna do for for allowing us to pass in what we're going to be recoloring and stuff and spawning, and um, we're gonna need a public texture two D. Um, I think it's I think we want texture two D. We'll find out texture two D um, texture. I'll call it bitmap. Eh, I'll call it texture. I should have done that before. I don't know why I fret on this stuff so much, but I do. I just want things to be as sensible as we can make them. Which, of course, I'm probably am failing at that. So, uh, oh yeah, we want to actually reopen this now. So, what we're going to do is we're going to just do this and start. And we're going our texture. So we're going to do for each um, color 32 in texture dot get pixels 32. So get pixels 32 is faster than get pixels. Um, it uses the 0 to 255 approach rather than the floating point approach for what each color actually is. So if you're going to be manipulating a lot of stuff, you probably, and this is actually a function, so we need to put that at the end there. And we need to actually give this a name. Um, so for each color 32, uh, color in texture dot get pixels 32. So what we're going to do is we're going to need to track where we are. So we could just start spawning things based on the colors. So let's let's look at that real quick. So let's instantiate um, cube transform dot position. We're just going to do that, and we're going to do uh, just quaternion dot identity. And let's do this as game object. Actually, you know, let's make it the renderer. Because then we don't have to grab the renderer. That's all we actually care about. So we want just the renderer. Is that what we care about? Yeah, that's what we care about. So um, we're going to say renderer instance equals instantiate as renderer. There we go. And we have to make sure that our input is a renderer as well. So whatever we give it has to actually have a renderer, which is appropriate because we're going to be changing its color. So we're going to do um, uh, instance dot color no dot um, dot main texture dot material. Yeah, there you go. Dot material dot color. There we go. So we're going to set the color equal to color. And um, that's all we're going to do. So this is, let's just see if this part works first. This is not going to be very exciting, but I just want to see if it works. So we're going to now, um, we need a cube, so I'm just going to create the basic cube. And we're just going to put that in there, delete it here from here. 
And we're going to just uh, create a empty game object. We'll just put it at zero, zero, zero. And let's move the main camera so that it's at zero, zero in the Y while we're here. And I'm just gonna put create cubes from texture on here. We're going to give it our gold coin and we're going to give it our cube. And in theory, if we hit play, we won't get any errors and it'll make a whole bunch of cubes. They're all in the same place. Or we got a problem. Um, uh, coin gold is not readable. Texture memory, you have to make it readable in the texture import sentence. That's great. I'm glad that it told us such a detailed error. So this error here um, is very easily fixed. We just click on the gold coin. We're going to go into advanced. And then what we need to do is read what write enabled on. So this will fix that. So we hit apply now and hit play. So there we go, we've got a bunch of cubes and it looks like they have mostly yellowish colors. They also have different alpha transparencies a little bit, so hopefully that's not gonna be a problem. But um, but yeah, so, uh, but they're all in the same place. And let's just go ahead and put a key, uh, light in the scene too real quick. So let's put light, directional light, and just do it one more time just to show what they look like. So there they are. So now we want them to actually be in the proper pattern. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna make two variables, int x and int y. And I'm gonna set them to zero to start with. And these are gonna be what keep track of where we are. So texture.getPixels32, what this does is it returns an array of colors. And the array is, I think, starting from the bottom left. It could be from the top left. We'll, we'll reverse things if it's wrong. But I think it's from the bottom left, and it's going um, across for a line, and then across for another line. And it's just this, so it's just this long line of pixels, but then we have to assume that it's actually a two-dimensional two picture. So what we're going to do is, at the end of our loop, I'm going to increase x. x equals, uh, in x, sorry, just x plus plus. That's all I need. And I'm also going to track Y. So the way we're going to track Y is um, if X is greater than or equal to, we might change that. Um, uh, we want texture dot width. So this gives us our texture width in pixels. So if we're over or if we're at the edge of the texture, we want to go up a line. So we're going to do y plus plus and x equals zero. So now x and y should represent where things are two dimensionally. So so now it's useful. So what we're going to do is we're going to take our transform position. We still want to use that so that we can choose where this thing goes. Um, but we're going to add um, transform dot right times x. Now this will only work in the unit cube. I'll leave it to you to add a size in there. It's not too hard, you just add another multiply. So transform.write times x plus um, transform.up times y. And this might be all we need to do. So if we hit save and we hit play. All right, so that's interesting. Is that interesting? Where did this cube come from? Okay, so it didn't do anything right. Why didn't that work? So... That should have done something different than that. Why did it just create a cube in one spot again? Weird. Alright. Um, what did we do wrong? So, transform.write times x, transform.up times y... And that should have at least jostled these a little bit. Huh. Um, let's do a debug let log. Debug.log um, x. Let's just do this. Debug dot log y. Let's see what we're actually getting in on our x and y values. Zero and zero. Huh. So for each color, 
Oh. We're saying x and y equals zero inside that loop. We actually want them outside of them. So that will probably help. So let's save that and hit play. There we go. Looking closer. All right, that's actually right. Now, the reason that these look weird is because it's supposed to be transparent there, but we don't support transparency on our current cubes. Now, we can fix this by just doing the transparency. I'm just going to show you that real quick. Let's get rid of the debug logs so that we don't have that extra stuff going on. So save. And uh, what we're going to do is um, we're just going to really quickly change the cube so that it has a different material. We're going to create a material. We're going to do um, transparency. And uh, all this is going to be is just transparent diffuse. We're just going to do transparent diffuse. And we're going to apply this to our cube. And so if we hit play again, we now have a bunch of cubes set up like a coin, which is awesome. And you can see that the outside edge pixels, we have this like kind of anti-aliasing thing going on, so that's cool. And uh, and so now this this will be costly though because it means that if there's any transparency in the in the object, you have to deal with the transparency stuff. Also, we've got a whole bunch of draw calls. Um, I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to do that in the amount of time that we have, but we'll see what we can do. Um, let's just really quickly look at this. So um, what I want to do instead now, um, so that we don't have to use that, let's just uh, not use transparency. I'm just going to switch this over to the default uh, material. So we're just going to do default diffuse. So we're back to where it uh, looks strange. So let's make it so that we throw away anything that has a zero. Uh, so if color um, dot a uh, does not equal zero. So what this will do is if there's no transparency, we'll cut the edges off. So we're not going to have partial transparency anymore. That's actually probably what we're going to want anyway. So if we hit save now and hit play, now we won't even generate cubes there. So it'll lower our number of cubes too. So we've still got some, we've got some slight anti-aliasing things. So we could make it so that there's a threshold or something. Um, public throat, public float, alpha threshold equals, let's set it to 50 for right now. And so if it's lower than alpha threshold, if it is greater, an alpha threshold, then we make the pictures. Otherwise, we don't. So if we do play now, there we go. We got a nice little thing of cubes that represent our image. That's awesome. See, it wasn't hard. Kind of cool. Let's call this, um, uh, what is it called? Uh, texture to uh, cubes. Two, cu two cubes. All right, so, um, Let's do one more thing real quick. Let's see if I can do it really, really fast. Um, we're going to create, we're going to do system.collections.generic. So right now, if we do this, we have one draw call per every pixel, which is bad because most of these pixels are actually kind of the same thing. So if we look at stats right now, we'll see that we're doing 58 draw calls and we're batching zero. So what we want to do is um, we want to... Uh, uh, if we do public list, wait, we don't system death collections dot generic public list um, uh, material. Uh, we're going to call this uh, palette um, equals new list material. And um, we're going to just do that. That'll be fine. So let's see if this will work. So I'm not guaranteeing that we're going to get this working, but I want to see if we can. So all we're going to do is, this could technically be private, but I want to see, see it in the inspector so we can look at it. So um, if, um, so, Oh yeah, we're gonna need to know if its color is originally. So let's actually do this as a dict. Um, public dictionary. So we're gonna do a dictionary, and what we're gonna do is it's going to take two keys. So so it's gonna key, key value right. So we want the value to be the material. The key will be a color thirty two. 
So color 32. And what we're going to do is um, uh, if dictionary dot, um, no, sorry, if uh, palette, palette dot contains key um, color 32. Sorry, not color 32. Contains key color. Actually, let's see. Not palette contains key color. We're going to add it. So we're going to do um, uh, you know, I don't actually have time to do this. Um, yeah, I'll add that after the show or something. But basically, you basically keep track of what we're going to be uh, each color, and then we put put that into the dictionary. And then instead of uh, setting the instance on material by color, we set the material to one of the pre-existing materials that we create for this. So, um, sorry, I'm not going to show that on the show, um, but uh, but it's I want to keep the show tight, and I thought I would have enough time to do that, and I just didn't, and my brain wasn't working good enough. So, thank you for watching. Um, uh, if you have any questions, please email me, pushypixels at pushypixels.com. You can also tweet me at Drakfire, that's D-R-A-K-F-Y-R-E, um, and um, support the show on Patreon. We have a Patreon page, search for Cooking with Unity, or find the link in our little bar at the top and uh, of the main page. And we've relaunched pushypixels.com, so check that out. And you guys have a great one, and I'll see you next week on Monday.